website to view the difference between options when purchasing Word 2013. The most common way to own Word is by purchasing the Microsoft Office Suite. You can go the traditional route and purchase a single license version like Office Home and Student 2013 or Office Professional 2013. However, each of these can only be licensed to one PC. This can be a drawback if you want to install the software on multiple computers. You can also choose a new option called Office 365 Home Premium. One of the primary differences is the ability to load Office on up to five PCs or Macs. And unlike the traditional version, which only requires you to purchase a license once, Office 365 is subscription-based. They do provide a trial opportunity to help you determine if Office 365 is right for you. Microsoft also provides a comparison chart on their website, showing the difference between the options available. This should help you determine if the traditional licensing version fits your needs or if the new subscription-based option is a better fit for you. Let's open Word 2013. First, click the Start button, then All Programs. Select Office 2013 and then click on Word 2013 to open the program. When Word starts, a display is shown called the Word Start screen. The pane on the left contains links to recently opened documents. The right pane has searchable templates which we'll cover later in the course. To get started with a new document, click the New Document Template. Now let's close Word and open it just using the existing file located on our desktop. All we need to do is double-click the file and Word will open with the document ready to be edited. The Word interface is similar to other Office 2013 software. You will need to know the layout of the Microsoft Word interface to become proficient in the software. The title bar is located at the top of the window. On the left is the Quick Access Toolbar. It contains commonly used commands like save and undo. You can add other commands to the toolbar based on what you frequently use. The middle contains the document name and the program being used. And the right side includes the help button, the ribbon display options button, and the minimum maximize and restore down button, along with the X, which is the close button. The ribbon is located below the title bar. The ribbon display option button lets you determine how the ribbon is displayed in your window. It can be set to auto hide the ribbon, show only the tabs, or show the tabs and commands. The ribbon contains the commands you will use with your documents. The ribbon is organized into tabs with related commands and these commands are placed into related groups. The arrow on the lower right corner of a group is known as the dialog box launcher. You can click on it to open a group's dialog box, giving you access to additional group options. The first tab in the ribbon is the file tab. This tab is different than the others because it opens the backstage view. The backstage view has commands that can be accessed from the colored pane. The commands let you manage the Word programs and files. For example, changing the program spell check options or saving a file. The status bar is located at the bottom of the window. The zoom controls are on the far right of the status bar. And the zoom slider and zoom controls provide an easy way to adjust the magnification of the screen. You'll notice the percentage of magnification shows as well. The View Shortcuts toolbar is located next to the Zoom Controls. It contains view buttons that allow us to easily change how we are viewing our document. The available options are Web Layout View, the Default Print Layout View, and 
with Word 2013, the new Read Mode View. We'll cover more about the different viewing modes later in the course. The left side of the status bar provides document information. The type of document information you'll see can be customized by right-clicking the section and then selecting the information you want to see. One of the features of Office 365 is the ability to work with Microsoft Word 2013 on a tablet or touchscreen computer. Because of this, there is a new functionality that allows us to adjust the spacing between the buttons on the ribbon. To change from the standard mouse mode to the touch mode, we'll need to add the icon to the Quick Access Toolbar button. We'll just select the drop-down arrow on the far right of the Quick Access Toolbar, click or touch if you're on a tablet computer, the touch mouse mode, which will activate it. You'll know it's activated if you see a check mark next to the command. You can switch back and forth between the mouse and the touch mode by either clicking or tapping the icon. Now the commands on the ribbon are larger if they're set up in touch mode. When you're in the touch mode, the commands on the ribbon are larger and not so crowded. This feature ensures that you only tap one command at a time.